Good afternoon. On behalf of the Trent Rotary Club, on behalf of the Trent Business Association, I'd like to welcome everybody for coming out to support the State of the City Address. My name is Bob Howie, and I'm the president of the Trent Rotary Club. At this time, I'd like to turn the microphone over to Mr. Rob Bovet. He's going to lead us out to implication and the Pledge of Allegiance. And usually uh, my father Bob gets to do this as former mayor, but more importantly as ordained deacon. Uh, but he had a clergy lunch today, so I guess I'm the, I'm the next one down, down the line. Uh, let's start with the, the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. We could bow our heads as we ask for God's blessing. Dear Lord, we ask you to bless our food for the strength and nourishment of our bodies to allow us to continue good deeds here on earth. We ask that you bless our hometown of Trenton and its people who help keep the community viable and its ability to provide the quality and enhancement of life throughout our homes, neighborhoods, and locale. We ask special blessings on our mayor, city council, department heads, police, and fire that they continue to lead by example with a character that creates a positive synergy with city employees and citizens alike. As in keeping with Rotary International theme of be a gift to the world, let everyone here today strive through our actions to be a gift to our families, friends, neighbors, in order to continue goodwill and genuine caring for all. We ask these and all your blessings in Christ Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Mr. Bovitz. At this time, I just have one quick uh, rotary announcement. If we can have uh, Kimberly Mock, please come on up. Kim is our chairperson for one of our largest fundraising events, bringing the D down river. Thank you. Uh, we are having one of our biggest events. It's March 5th, Saturday, March 5th. It's called Bringing the D Down River. And in the past, you might have been familiar with it. It used to be the Down River Beach Blast. But we found that we wanted to make a little bit of change to stir up a little bit more excitement, and we're doing just that. I can tell you we probably already have 15 tables sold, and there's going to only be 40 tables that night. So that night, we're going to be featuring like the foods from Detroit and the sounds of Detroit called the Saints of Soul. So it's going to be your, your food, your drinks. Uh, there's going to be lots of raffles that night, silent auctions, and some bigger auctions as well. So we really hope that you'll join us. The tickets are $40 a person for a table of 10 or $45 a piece. And that's your dinner, your drinks, your entertainment, and a lot of fun we're going to have that night. So I really hope that you'll join us. It'll be a great thing, and it's going to go to a great cause. Thank you. Thank you, Kim. Okay, at this time, it's my sincere pleasure to have the opportunity to introduce the Honorable Mayor Kyle Stack. Believe me, you make enemies with this job. Welcome everyone to the 14th Annual State of the City Address. A huge thanks goes to the Trenton Rotary Club and the Trenton Business Association for hosting this event. I'd like to first introduce some uh, special guests and elected officials that are in attendance today. So please hold your applause until I've finished with the introductions, please. First of all, I have from Congresswoman Bingle's um, office, uh, Jeffrey Chacoin, he's her aide. We have, uh, do you want to do one clap like we do it? Um, we have our council members, um, Senior Bill Lefevre, senior, senior member, Bob Howie, Nelson Perugi. We have our city assessor, John Delquist. I know he's here somewhere. He's in the far back there. Our city clerk, Debbie Devitt. Also, Mike McCullough, our city treasurer. And we also have our superintendent of schools, Rod Wakeham. Along with um, our, our, one of our guests is Levin Weiss. He's our government relations uh, representative from Chrysler. 
and he only has 60 days left and he retires. <laughs> so welcome, I, I, I'm glad that you could attend. I'd like to personally thank my administrative team, most that are present today for the fine job that they have done over the past year and their vision for the future for each of their departments. This team is what makes the city provide the exceptional services in the great city in which we live, work, and recreate. There is no I in team, and I know I've mentioned this before in one of my speeches, and all of our employees have been part of Team Trenton. Granted, we have had our challenges over the past year, but we have, uh, been, we have been productive. We are presently working on the 2016-2017 budget. My goal is to keep all of our employees just like we did for the past fiscal year of 2015. We will be working with our Mayor Pro Tem, Timber Bond Crooks, and the council to make this happen. All of our unions have settled their contracts except one, and I'm confident that we will reach an agreement. I am optimistic that we are starting to see an upswing to the economy. Uh, John Delquist, our city assessor, reported to me that the value of our homes has, been another, has seen another increase. It shall be a small one due to the inflation rate multiplier. That means a resident with a 50,000 taxable value will see a $150 increase in taxes for 2016, 2000, 2016 um, tax year. <coughs> Residential assessments will be going up this year about 6%, similar to last year. Commercial assessments will be rising this year at roughly 7%, somewhat more than last year, and industrial assessments are going down due to value adjustment and that the recently passed legislation, legislature for manufacturing personal property exemption will now be in effect for 2016. Our building department, led by city engineer Bill Hogan, informed me that his department has seen the rebound of private development and the continued housing market recovery since 2008. We have had 787 vacant properties registered with the city of Trenton going into 2016. We are now at 19. That means that 768 former vacant properties have been inspected, renovated, and either reoccupied or are in the process of being occupied. This speaks highly to the diligence of our building department staff and the attractiveness of the entire city housing stock. New businesses are starting to pop up in the city. Businesses such as Big B Coffee, Dirty Hole Landscaping, I know that doesn't, <laughs> you've probably seen her truck around town, and Joan, John Camilleri Law Offices, and future businesses are Ramsey's Family Restaurant, an Artesian Promenade Food, Saul's Chicago Hot Dogs, which will be a new, uh, under new management, Grotto Pizzeria and Mr. Shawarma Barbecue. Yep. Engineering department also led by uh, engineer Bill Hogan and staff has been working on and have completed the following. A covered pavilion picnic area was completed and access passes, paths installed at House Park. The installation of the second story windows have been replaced at the historical museum. The insulation, new roof and exterior siding have been replaced and completed at the Cultural Center building. DTE street light conversion with LED technologies is being worked on, and you'll see those in different areas of the city. They've been working on different uh, sections. West Jefferson paving from Van Horn to Slocum, a project with Wayne County has been completed. Concrete and asphalt pavement repair worth $1.4 million was completed. The DPS, led by Superintendent Jim Boson under the direction of uh, City Engineer Bill Hogan, um, has, the highlights are as follows for that department. We hired five new employees, and I have to brag about the employees. Um, they, they did an excellent job with the polar vortex. Last year, there was 16 plus inches of snow, Super Bowl Sunday, and that's coming up this, this weekend. And the monsoons of April through June, there was 16.7 inches of rain. We purchased three new sanitation trucks for in-house trash pickups to your homes. We removed and trimmed, removed and or trimmed 485 trees, planted 70 trees, five different species, repaired 50 water main breaks, and the department completed 6.9 miles of sanitary sewage, sewage, 
sewer cleaning, and televising. This program helps us to give the residents a heads up if their private house service is impeded by tree roots or mineral deposits which require immediate maintenance on the part of the homeowner. This heads up allows the homeowner to avoid potential backups in the future. One of the hot topics is recycling in our community. We recently met with the state of Michigan and the county of Wayne to discuss recycling and we are waiting for them to give us some ideas to implement a program, knowing we are a community that picks up our own trash. It's a little different when it comes to the trash being picked up by um, the cities and it being picked up by an individual privatized, privatized uh, department. The wastewater treatment led by uh, Superintendent Pat Raftery and under the direction of City Engineer Bill Hogan, the wastewater treatment plant will be completing a $2.6 million secondary process renovation project, replacing equipment that is 26 years old and has reached the end of its useful life. This project will require less energy and chemicals, and the plant is a modern facility utilizing a state-of-the-art computer control system. The council and I have been meeting quarterly with the department heads to keep a tab on where we are with the budget so that we, the city of Trenton, live within our means. As of our last quarterly meeting, we are on target. The department heads have done an exceptional job with their budgets, and especially my controller and her assistant have done a great job of that. So I thank you, Chris and Karen. The Economic Development Committee has been meeting on a monthly basis. We are always looking for businesses to fill our storefronts. We are a destination business area and the committee will continue to work to find businesses for our community. We have had some inquiries um, in regards to businesses so that we're, uh, we're going to try to keep the thumbs up with uh, where we're moving with that, but hopefully that these people will choose to pick Trenton as their um, place of business. Parks and Recreation is under the direction of Joanne Gagne. We were awarded a grant as part of the Downriver Down Link Greenways Initiative to connect the gateway to the International Wildlife Refuge to Elizabeth Park and Trenton to 60 plus miles of continuous trail. The goal is to have the project completed in this, by this fall in anticipation of the grand opening of the International Wildlife Refuge New Visitor Center, which is slated to open in spring of 2017. In January of 2015, we launched a 1.6 million energy conservation and improvement project with Honeywell at the Kennedy Ice Arena. Energy savings are already being realized. This investment will be paid back through guaranteed energy savings within 10 years. Our Healthy Initiative was launched January 2015, partnering with the Trenton Public Schools and Beaumont Health, in Beaumont Health. Our printing of our passport to health booklet is complete and ready for distribution. And it looks like this, and there were some on the table. So be sure to take this. This has got great information. Um, they've done a wonderful job with this through Beaumont. It was designed to give people information about nutrition, physical fitness, healthcare, and opportunities that are available in our community to give, get active. A number of successful programs have been, have been started, such as our superhero training, our Catch Kids program with Trenton Public Schools, and balance classes. Thank you, Beaumont Health, for getting our community on track to become a healthy community. We are continuing to operate the Elizabeth Park, Wayne County Maria, Marina will be open early spring. Kennedy Ice Arena, hockey tournaments, and advertising for the Kennedy Recreation Center made this the first time in 14 years we didn't have to touch the general fund to pay the box. I would like to put a, a big plug in for this weekend because we have the hockey showcase this weekend. And if anybody can help, please contact the recreation department. We've got openings in the penalty boxes and also uh, goal judging. Fireworks this past year, the general sponsorship from the Fritz Enterprises, we represented, we presented a fabulous 4th of July pyro musical fireworks show, which is one of the biggest displays on the 4th. It has been also noted as the biggest fireworks presentation next to Detroit's. Thank you to the Fritz family for all the years you have provided 
a spectacular show. Police Department, led by Steve Voss, under the direction of our Director of Police and Fire Services, Jim Nardoni. The following improvements have been made. Updated patrol cars and department cars through federal forfeiture uh, account, no cost to the public. Continued improvements through education for staff. Continued improvements in the 33rd District Court revenue. Just wanted to reinforce with the public that we are diligently working with our school district superintendent and staff to keep our children safe, along with keeping the lines of communication open for possible shared services. Our fire department, led by Chief Dean Creech, under the direction of our Director of Police and Fire Services, Jim Nardoni, the following improvements have taken place. Replaced an, uh, and, I'm sorry, replaced an ambulance, an engine, and a ladder truck. We are awarded the assistance to firefighters grant to purchase aging self-contained breathing apparatuses which were over 20 years old. Continuous training and education of firefighters is being initiated to make sure we can safely and efficiently respond to emergencies for our residents. Our library, Francine Stanek is our librarian. The transition from Wayne County library system to our four city library has been very successful. We have been able to provide all the services that Wayne County had to offer and more with a savings of $200,000 to go with that. So thank you to the other communities of Grozeal, Brownstown, and Woodhaven for being part of our shared services. I know that all of you are thinking what is happening with Riverside Hospital and DSC Limited, also known as the McLeod Steel Properties. I'll start with Riverside Hospital. Dr. Nasir has received a certificate of need dated on uh, June 2nd of 2015. He has a two-year time frame without an extension to start the project. We have had negotiations with his engineering firm or, that he deals with, which is Hennessy Engineering, to put a plan in place that is doable. <coughs> a preliminary site plan has been submitted to our engineering department, and a rezoning petition was submitted to the Planning Commission to set a public hearing on May, or I'm sorry, on February 24th. It is hopeful that it will be before the City Council by March 21st. In 2011, a brownfield was granted for a project that did not allow for deed restrictions. Deed restrictions were lifted in uh, September of 2013 when staff and I sat down with Henry Ford to come to a resolution. We are doing everything in our effort to move forward on this development. McLeod Steel. We have applied for the grant from the Environmental Protection Agency to have the property assessed for contaminants. We also have received a grant from the U.S. Wildlife to plant 150 trees on the site to help pull the contaminants from the ground. The trees will be planted this spring on the site. DSC Limited has a one-year forbearance agreement with the County of Wayne with an ending date of 1231, 2016. DTE closing. We have one, we are one of 15 plants in the state that is slated to close in 2022. The Trenton Channel plant. We have hosted a federal meeting which was one of four across the country this past September. We are looking with DTE and we are hopeful that DTE will change their mind and add the plant as a natural gas changeover. We also met in Chicago with the Michigan Department of Environmental Quality, the U.S. Environmental Protection Agency, and held a roundtable at the International City Managers Association regarding redevelopment ideas for this site. In closing, I, I wasn't going to be very long with all this good stuff, so I wouldn't bore you. But in the next year to come, we will continue to work for businesses to fill our storefronts. We will look outside the box to keep Trenton above the rest when it comes to a place where people want to live, work, and recreate. We will continue to balance our budget as we have for the last four years. We are working to get West Road resurfaced with the county. We are demolishing the pavilion, the Tiper building, and the clock tower in the near future so that we can open that up for possible development. You will see the museum completed with the renovations hopefully this summer. The 4th Street and Railroad track, grade separation is still on our radar, radar to pursue. We have the best community around, no doubt. 
I travel around different parts of the community just looking to see how our neighborhoods look. I want you to know that I cannot be on every street in this community and ask for your eyes and ears to, uh, for your area. Let me know if there is a concern or an idea that would make your area a better place in which to live. I tell our staff that we are a service-based industry and we are here to listen and help our residents the best we can. I love Trenton and we the department heads and the employees will strive to keep to provide the services that we are accustomed to. I will leave, with, leave you with a quote. This is uh, Black History Month and I left this quote with my, I give a quote to my uh, department heads every Monday when we have a department head meeting. They can, this is kind of appropriate with what we've got going. Um, the quote is from Frederick Douglass, and this is Black History Month. Without struggle, there is no progress. Thank you for listening, and go Team Trenton, and I thank you all for coming here, and hope that if there's any questions that you might have, um, a lot of the department heads are here, if you'd like to ask them, or just feel free to give them a call. Thank you very much. Okay, now I would like to introduce to you we're going to be um, awarding the Business of the Year, and I, I am going to ask that David Pass from the, he's the president of the TBA, Trenton Business Association, to come up for that presentation. And by the way, thank you, Hal Akrashek, for these beautiful flowers. Thank you, Mayor. I'd like to thank the Rotary again for inviting the TBA to participate in this, the State of the City program today. On behalf of our association, we'd like to thank the many Rotarians, who's also a member of TGA, that we appreciate your support. And because of it, we're able to help put on programs and support events that might attract business to Trent. If you've noticed the banners down West Jefferson the past couple of years, we've partnered with the Rotary through memberships to be paid three different colors banners three different times a year to install and to promote business and enhance downtown street landscape. For the past 12 years, we have honored some stellar businesses in Trenton, including Dr. Jackson's, Jackson, Snyder, and Parker, worked with South Shore, Home Sweet Home, The Framery, Metro Shores Credit Union, Colors by Kim, Fritz Enterprise, Mr. Handyman, Savannah's, Dan's Barbershop, West Green Pharmacy, the European Boutique, and last year's Savannah under new ownership. This year was no exception. We had lots of quality people that are up for this award. And as I call your name, would you please come up and stand, stand with us. Uh, first nominee is Alterations by So and, so and More, Beverage Express, or anybody? Yes. Beverage Express, Captain's Barbershop, The Lighthouse of Trenton, Roundhouse Barbecue, Timber Salon, and West Grange Pharmacy. All these businesses were nominated online in December, and the voting took place on Facebook in January. Uh, our winner received the most votes with 337 likes, comments, and shares, and we had many comments and shares, which I want to share one of them with you. Uh, this comment comes, Lighthouse of Trenton lights up my life. By far the best business in Trenton. Hardworking, genuine people with a passion for what they do. Best, best lighting store, period. Quality people, quality product. All my lamps in my home are from the lighthouse. And all my exceptional outside lighting as well. And the list goes on and on. And it's an honor today to like to have you help me congratulate Susan Wallace of the Lighthouse of Trenton as this year's event.
Now I'd like to call back up Bob Howie, president of the Rotary. Thank you, Dave. We have one more presentation uh, this afternoon. At this time, I'd like to call up uh, Michael McCullough, uh, past president of Trump Rotary Club and our current uh, city of Trenton treasurer. He's going to make a presentation today for the service above self. Mike? Thank you very much, President Bob. Uh, just seems like a few weeks ago we were recognizing some folks for making Trenton a special place at the City Awards Banquet. And uh, many in this room were recognized. In fact, all of us were recognized because we participate in making this a unique community. Uh, one more award that was not recognized that night is the Service Above Self Award. It's 12 years uh, in the making. Uh, it's to recognize and acknowledge those individuals who have improved the quality of life within our community. And uh, it's, it's a privilege for, uh, for me to be able to present that because uh, we in Rotary, now while we're, none, of, none of the Rotarians are eligible for this award, we like to feel that uh, the person that gets this award has a like mind and heart and uh, likes to improve uh, the uh, quality of life within the community. Now, this individual is uh, in the back of the room, so I'm going to acknowledge her name, and as she makes the walk of fame up to the front, I'm going to read why she was recognized. And I'm not sure she knows that, but we'll, uh, we'll have your eyes to the back, and we'll see on the expression on her face whether she's surprised or not. Uh, this year's this year's uh, Service Above Self Award winner is Ruth Casnell. And Ruth, if you could make your way to the front while I talk about you. Anyways, uh, you can put your hands together and give her a little applause. <laughs> Ruth, uh, Ruth was uh, nominated for Trenton's Rotary Service Above Self Award because of her sincere love for volunteering. Uh, she is a very active with the church, the exchange club, parks and recreation activities, senior activities, as well as her own personal family activities. Hi, Ruth. How are you doing? Congratulations. Uh, she was married to Donald for 48 and a half years. After his death 10 years ago, Ruth really ramped up her volunteerism and became even more active. She's been involved for 20 years with the city elections committee. When her kids were small, she was involved with the PTO, the PTA, and the Girl Scouts Brownies, the Torch Drive, MDA, and the Cancer Association. Now she enjoys the New Horizons Senior Club and the Friday Night Friendship Dance Club where she coordinates the bands for the events. She is an active member of the Exchange Club where the main focus is prevention of child abuse. And then four years ago, the, uh, the, you created the picnic with uh, uh, SNAP, and that's the Trenton Senior Needs Activities Program, and it has become one of her favorite uh, days in planning crafts and food for the kids. As a member of the Exchange Club, she's also helped with the Marshmallow Drought, the Parade Lineup, the Boob Ash Cultural Center, and activities such as the Teas in December. She's volunteered with the Hockey Showcase, which, by the way, is again is coming up again this week, which is a, a focuses and showcases our own community. She is also helpful with the, and helps with the daddy-daughter and the mother-son date nights. She is on the finance committee for First United Methodist and looks forward to serving the soup kitchen every quarter. In her free time, she plays cards, horseshoes at the Westfield Center and has done a relay for life and, uh, with her granddaughter, Lindsay. She has four children, seven grandchildren, and three great-grandchildren, and her na friends nicknamed her the Energizer Bunny, and I'm sure you all can agree. Ladies and gentlemen, please help me recognize and welcome Trenton's Energizer Bunny and our newest Service Above Self Award winner, Ruth Cassidy. Plaque says 2016 Truck Rotary Club Service Above Self Award. Ruth Bailenow, for your unselfish <laughs> devotion to making our community a better place to live and work, presented February 1st, 2016. Congratulations, Ruth.
I, you know, I have so much fun doing all of this. It's such a joy to do something that you really like. And I saw on TV, I think it was Blue Bloods, it said, uh, if you enjoy what you do, if you never work a day in your life. And that's kind of the way I thought, that's kind of the way I feel about uh, doing the, uh, that I have so much fun with the kids. And incidentally, that is special needs uh, kids instead of the senior, so. Uh, <laughs> so, yeah. And it's a beautiful bunch of kids. I just love uh, doing that, and they have so much fun. So it's just a real joy. And if anybody wants to volunteer for something, I'll put you to work. Thank you very much, Bruce. Congratulations. In closing, I just want to, on, on behalf of all the members of the Trenton Rotary Club, and all the members of the Trenton Business Association. I just wanted to thank each and every one for again taking time out of your busy schedule and uh, honoring coming up and, and listening to uh, Mayor Carl Sack for the City of the Address. So thanks again. Have a great day. Meeting is officially adjourned.